Hi my friends, in our previous video we learned the lambda function and in this video I am aiming to make a video that will allow us to cover and uh, to practice new things related to lambda. Let's start with the map function but first let's take a look at the, its definition. Map is a function that works as an iterator to return a result after applying a function to every item of an iterable like tuple, list and etc. It is used when you want to apply a single transformation function to all the iterable elements. I will try to exemplify as much as I can and then we will understand better. First I will create a list, so let's say example list and uh, I will write some numbers in it. And uh, I am defining a function to get square of these numbers one by one. We have already learned how to do it. So I am not dwelling on. So I will just get square and uh, the parameter is a and uh, it will return the square of it. Okay, the function is ready. Now, what we want is we want to calculate the square of each of the numbers in this list and uh, create a new list with the calculated result. If you think about how you can do this with the knowledge we have learned so far, I think you are probably saying you can do it with, with a for loop. That is what I think of. There may be better solutions, but let's continue with the method we know. So let's see how we can do the calculation by using for loops. So I created an empty list. So let's say example list 2. It's an empty list. And uh, I will write a for loop here. So let's say in the example list. This will get these numbers one by one. We will add the calculated value in the example list two. Example list two dot append and uh, we will calculate the value. So we need this function. I call this function and then as a parameter I send the value one by one is the last step to see it better i will print the example list tool i run it look at terminal i got the result now let's try to get the same result using the map function i'm creating another list so let's say example list 3 and then i write map which is the subject of the video and then the map function takes two parameters. First one is a function and the second one is a data which is which is iterable. So as a first parameter we can pass this function. So let's write it because we want to get the square of numbers one by one. As you may remember from the previous lessons, we don't put parentheses when calling the function here. The map function already sends comma separated values to this function one by one, so we don't need to put an extra parentheses. As a second parameter, I need to pass the data which can be iterated in our scenario example list. I need to print this variable values and uh, I run it look at the terminal I think the output in the terminal surprised you a bit we want to get the results here but it returned a map object actually the values we expect now are in this object but we need to specify what type we want to receive this result that's it in the form of a list tuple or a set so I need to convert it to, to a list or a tuple or a set. We can convert it here like that or we can convert it here. 
it is up to you so if I run it again I got the result I want to draw your attention to this function here we just achieve the desired result with just one line of code we didn't use the for loop as we did here the map function visits these items for us in order and performs operations we specify in this function I mean the map function takes the items one by one from this list and it applied what we specified here I hope we understand what the map function does I assume that you think that the lambda function we learned in the previous lesson will also fit here so we don't need to write the functions like that so I remove the, the function here and I'm going to write lambda function an anonymous function will take a single parameter just like that one so I put an X and I put a colon and uh, it will just return the same thing just the parameter is different the I will delete them I don't need them anymore if I run it I got the same result let's talk about how we can work with more than one iterable data at the same time using the map function I'm cleaning my editor now I'm going to create two tuples here I always use list so this can be different so let's write three five nine seven and let's say numbers one I'm going to create numbers two now let's try to make addition on these elements with each other using the map function the item in the first index will be summed up with the item in the first index of second tuple doing that by using the map function is pretty simple I'm creating another variable which will hold its totals so let's say result and uh, I'm writing map again I will use lambda function for that for that operation I need two parameters here and uh, a plus B I put a comma here now let's pass our our tuples to map function I will pass the numbers one and the numbers two let's print the result here I will clear my terminal we forgot to convert it to a list or a tuple it is a map object so we need to convert it I run it again look we have had the result we expected you can check the values here if you don't believe in that by the way there is no limit to how many lists there should be for example if I add one more tuple here let's do it quickly let's change the, the values here the map function can handle this uh, tuple as well so if I pass it I will run it and we will get an error look we give two tuples but we only have two parameters here so I need to add one more parameter and uh, I will also edit here if I run it four plus four plus three equal to eleven you may have a question like what if the lengths of the data we pass here are different from each other do we get an error 
So let's take a look at it together. I am deleting an item in the third tuple here and then I will run it again. Look at terminal. We didn't get an error but since the indexes were not the same it made the addition according to the list whose land is minimum. Now let's try to make a different example to, to see the usage of if statements in map and the lambda function. I'm cleaning up my editor again. I will quickly create a list with tuples in it. So let's say goods. It is a list but it will have some tuples in it. Okay, I have such a list here which is consist of tuples. There are four tuples here. Let's say we are a crazy store and then we will fix the price 200. If the price is higher than 250, we are a crazy store. Let's try to do this using the lambda function. First of all, I create a new variable called let's say cheaper goods. And uh, of course, I will use the map function since I will get these tuples one by one. I will use the lambda function, an anonymous function, and then the parameter will be x. The x will represent the tuples one by one. We have already learned that. Tricky part here is these tuples consist of two items name and price the name of the product is not important to us we will check the price we will fix the price 200 if it is higher than 250 so first of all i need to put a colon here and uh, you know we want to return a tuple like that so we need to put parentheses and uh, we will make it tuple just to just to remind you, we don't need to write return here. The lambda function already does it for us. So the first item of the tuple will be the name of product. So I will write it directly. I'm not going to do anything with it. So let's say x and the square brackets, the first item. This will be the name of the product. It will be a computer, television, mouse, and phone. You know that. And uh, I need to put a comma here because it is going to be a tuple. Then I want the price to be 200. But in which condition? The condition is that if x first item, I mean this will represent the price here. So if the price is greater than 250, price will be 200. Okay, we wrote it. I think you noticed that we use the if statements a little bit different in, in the lambda function. We determine the condition. If the condition is true, then it will return this value. Now let's determine a result for the opposite condition with else. So I need to write else. If it is less than 250, then I just need to return the price itself. I don't need to make any changes on it. I think it is kind of tricky, so I want to make it clearer. We will return 200 if this condition is true. If not, we will return the price itself. So I will print it. We just need to convert it to the list. Don't forget that. I will run it. We got an error because we forgot to pass our list here. 
I run it again. Okay, look at the terminal. Those with a price greater than 250 were fixed to 100. But the others remain the same. Actually, I want to change this one. So let's change the condition here. If it is greater than 250 or equal to 250. So I will run again. Now look at the terminal again. The price of the television has been fixed to 200 because we changed the condition here. I will end the video here. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.